Hello ICA, my name is Tobias Dienlin and today I'm going to present some research on the potential effects of COVID-19 related social media use on well-being. And as the title already gives away, I there aren't any major effects, so bear with me if you are curious to learn why I came to that conclusion. Um, as you can remember, in uh, the beginning of 2020, um, COVID uh, hit the news and um, it was really um, quite a difficult situation. So many, if not most of us, were glued to our smartphones reading the news and many of us were doom scrolling, couldn't stop uh, using social media to, to learn about COVID and what all that is. And so with this research, I tried to find out, does using social media for COVID-19 related reasons affect our well-being? If we look at uh, the literature and um, theory, there are already a couple of things uh, we know and what we, that we can use to, to um, learn about potential effects. First, uh, we've, we know now for long that media effects do differ across individuals. So for some effects are uh, beneficial, for others they are more negative. On average, though, on average, um, uh, the effects are most often small and not, not particularly large in general. And if we look at social media in particular, also here a recent meta review by Adrian Meyer and Leonard Reinecke also found that the effects of social media use on well-being are potentially negative, but really in the very, very, very small. So potentially not that um, relevant. And why are, in this case, the negative effects, particularly on well-being, trivial also with regard to COVID-19? I mean, it was pretty negative. First of all, um, there's the um, set point theory of well-being, uh, long and well-established in psychology, which finds that well-being is surprisingly stable. Only very, very hard um, events such as um, divorce, unemployment or death of a beloved person can have longer lasting effects on well-being um, but in most cases even if you win the lottery after one year or so um, well-being returns to prior levels so well-being is surprisingly stable it doesn't change that easily and if we look at media use also with regard to COVID-19 I mean we all know from um, users and gratifications research that we do use media for reasons right to to learn about stuff and if that doesn't isn't the case people use media less right so there it does make some sense why we spend time online and maybe it made sense to spend much time online during uh, a pandemic right and finally uh, also mood management theory tells us that people do use media to um, manage their mood their well-being and they implicitly learn um, what media is good for them and what not and so I'd be very surprised to see if there are particularly negative effects. So I pre-registered the hypothesis that the within person effects of COVID-19 related social media and use will be trivial. How did I go about analyzing that research question? Um, I found and I heard about the Austrian Corona Panel Project, a huge uh, data set with uh, overall 24 waves that started at the very onset of the first um, uh, wave of the pandemic in I think March or April 2020 in Austria. It's largely representative of the country and uh, it includes many relevant variables. So and for each wave there were at least 1500 participants and um, the measured variables include um, specific types of social media use for COVID-19 related reasons, reading, liking and sharing content and also a very detailed measure on the different channels such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, WhatsApp, YouTube. How long did people spend on these um, websites? Uh, and then we also had um, dependent, as dependent variables, uh, life satisfaction positive effect and negative effect. And importantly, because it was really a large scale, a large data set, many other variables were also measured that I could use as control variables. 
including sociodemographic variables, but also varying factors such as how much time people spend doing uh, exercises, right? Uh, or um, grocery shopping and all that. Uh, how satisfied they were with the democracy and I could use those as um, to control for these potential confounding variables. I analyzed um, the data using random effects within between models and um, these are sophisticated types of analyses that allow to separate between person variants from within person variants and I focused here particularly on the within person level effects right because this is from a theoretical perspective what we are actually interested in not just between person relations but rather whether if i change my media diet does this affect how i feel right and so um, these type of analyses help us do that and i pre-registered my analyses um, the data is openly available i used it as well um, and uh, all the materials and the um, analyses you can find online so what's a trivial effect size? So that's a very interesting question. And um, in the paper that, uh, is, uh, that I've, I'm currently publishing alongside um, for this publication, I spend a lot of time uh, discussing and, and presenting this approach, right? Uh, it's not so well established in communication, but in other areas we do do this uh, much more often. It's much more common, right? To focus on effect sizes. And so uh, I briefly, I try to explain how it works. You define the smallest effect size of interest, right? Um, if it's smaller, then it's just not large enough. It's not just focused on statistical significance, but on the effect size. And here I defined an B of 0.25 for well-being uh, and for uh, life satisfaction in particular. And um, we see that we, we, we define a null region ranging from minus B equals 0.25 to plus B equals 0.25. And if our effect and the confidence interval of the effect falls completely within our null region, we would then actually accept the trivial effect and say, no, the effect is trivial. If, it, if the effect falls completely outside of this null region, we would reject a trivial effect. If it uh, doesn't include zero, but includes the um, sessor, the smallest effect size of interest, we can at least reject a positive effect in this case here. And if the confidence interval um, spans across the null and um, the sessoi, we would then suspend judgment because it could be that there is a, um, a, a trivial effect, it could be there's a non-trivial effect and we just don't know. So what did we find? What did I find? <laughs> Here first you see that we have the three um, dependent variables, life satisfaction, positive effect, and negative effect. And we look at the three different types of social media use for COVID-19 related reasons, reading, liking, and sharing, and posting. And uh, overall we find no relevant within person effects of different types of social media use and well-being. For life satisfaction, we see that yes, all confidence intervals fall completely within um, the null region, same with positive effect and same with negative effect. And it's not even close, right? So it's, um, it's non-significant and it's not crossing the, or leaving the smallest effect size of interest or the null region. If we look at the different channels, we see a very comparable picture. In general, no relevant within person effects of different social media challenges channels on well-being, but we do see that Twitter has, has at least, um, we can rule out the positive effect and for Instagram we can rule out a negative effect. So uh, here we do see at least deviations from zero, but still not necessarily relevant. So overall, what do we find? We find that First, there are really no meaningful effects of COVID-19 related social media use and well-being. So the hypothesis was uh, supported. It could be that Twitter has potentially slightly negative effects for life satisfaction. And Instagram potentially slightly positive effects for life satisfaction. But future research would need to um, check whether that's really the case. Additional analyses reveal that even during a pandemic, we found that Life, levels of life satisfaction and well-being were surprisingly stable 
and other variables as um, co-varying factors were indeed more relevant. They did leave the um, <clears throat> null region, so it's not that it's not possible to falsify the effect. So my takeaway is that my study results don't support that there is a large negative effect, so I think um, we shouldn't, there's no really no cause for alarm. I think it's okay to spend quite some time online uh, during a pandemic, um, f on average at least, um, the effects are, as I find, rather trivial. And with that, I'm happy to get some comments and some feedback and yeah, look forward to a discussion and seeing everyone who's there in Paris. Bye-bye.